The chair knows the time is 6.02. I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge, and as ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. We'll begin with the roll call of the ZBA members and panel for this hearing. Steve Judge is present. Mr. Craig Meadows? Present. Mr. Everald Henry? Present. Mr. Philip White? Present. And Mr. David Soldiger? Present. The quorum is present. Also attending to the public hearing tonight is Ms. Christine Brestrup, Town Planning Director, Jacinta Williams, Town Planner, and I think we'll be joined by Nate Malloy, Senior Planner, later on in the, in the meeting. And I think also Carolyn Murray of KP Law will also, is attending to assist us in our, uh, and provide guidance in our deliberations. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to observe the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of the members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 10 Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties of interest. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and recorded by town staff and may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and ZBA webpage. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or to gather additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raise hand function on their screen or by pressing star nine on their phone. The chair with the assistance of the staff will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where the information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition is heard by the board. Each petition that is heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing for the variance to file this decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there's a 20 day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in Superior Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, public hearing ZBA FY 2025-04, Wayfinders Inc. requests a comprehensive permit under Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40B to construct 31 mixed income rental housing in a three, 31 unit mixed income rental housing in a three story development with 14 proposed parking spots on the premises of 31 Southeast Street, map 15A, parcel 20, in the RC Village Center Residence Zoning Districts, and a 47 unit mixed income rental housing in a three story building with 46 proposed parking spots on the premises of 70 Belter Town Road. Map parcel 15C and uh, 58, 15C59, 15C60 in the RN and the FPC, Neighborhood Residence and Flood Prone Conservancy Zoning Districts. This uh, is continued from September 19th, uh, September 19th, I think. After that, um, general public comment period. Other business not anticipated within the last 48 hours and then adjournment. So that's our agenda for tonight. We have no minutes at this point. Uh, we'll do that the next time. Uh, but before we start on our, um, on our agenda, I was lucky enough to attend a uh, reception for Chris Breshbup today. 
This is her last, uh, I don't know if it's her last day, but it's her last ZBA meeting. And uh, then she's going to retire. And I just want to say a couple of things. Um, that when I was first appointed as a, a, an alternate, uh, Chris was the person that gave me the orientation. And she has been just an, you know, the, a classic example of a really good town staffer. She has, she was expert in what she, in her area. She was uh, knowledgeable and dedicated. She was dedicated to the process as well as to the town. I think she just truly has a soft spot for all the development in this town. She feels strongly about it. She has an opinion and, but it is not an opinion that is, uh, she doesn't have an agenda, but she has an opinion. And when that opinion was given, it carried great weight. Um, Chris, I just think that you did a phenomenal job for 20 years for this town. I've only been, benef been a beneficiary of it for eight, but during those eight years, um, I really think that you've done quite, quite a lot of work that's benefited everybody in this town. And so thank you so much for all your efforts. We really celebrate your time and your tenure here at the at town and all your work with us on the ZBA. And I am happy to note that um, Chris has volunteered to help us um, going forward, at least for the solar uh, array project and for maybe for other things. We've got a lot on our plate and your expertise will be missed. And as well as your cheerful demeanor and <laughs> your dedication to, the, to all of us. So thank you, Chris. Congratulations. And I uh, hope, to, hope we get a chance to continue to work with you uh, to the extent you want to. <laughs> to the extent you want to, and fewer late night meetings. Thank you very much, Steve. I've really enjoyed working with you all. It's been a privilege to work for the town. Thank you. Okay. Um, the first order of business is ZBA FY 2025-04 Wayfinders Inc. Requesting a comprehensive permit under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40B. Topics for, uh, for this meeting, were stormwater management, stormwater infrastructure, and the lighting plan. And we had some follow-up questions from our last meeting, uh, which was to confirm if the oil tanks will and have been removed. Uh, more information from the applicant regarding the residential rental bylaw waiver. Um, we'd asked about laundry facilities. I know that the, um, the architect was gonna look at that and perhaps there's some uh, development or some since, that, since last uh, week's meeting. We also discussed the visit that there were going to be changes made to try to reduce the vi visibility of the HVAC systems on the roof, and then the, the lighting study, study for the board to review. Um, what I have, from what I understand, um, and Jamie, is that uh, the lighting plan is being compiled, but it's not done at this time to to uh, present to us. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Our, our, they're, they're working on that and they, they will have that for next meeting. Great. Okay, we'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting. That's fine. It was to, asking for a quick turnaround. Um, and then we had, we'll go through these other items um, as we go through. But first, um, I want to go through the submissions before we get to the uh, specifics of the both the topics as well as the responses to our questions. We received a document titled C 5.0 Site Utility Plan submitted September 23rd and, we and also included were two staff submissions, meeting schedules for the ZBA and a schedule for the Wayfinders Comprehensive Permit. I think that's the extent of the submissions and there's no public comment either that we've received. Okay. All right. So, um, Jamie. Give us your name and address for the record, and then we can talk about the stormwater management um, plan. And please provide us an update on your meeting with the Conservation Commission, which I think was last night, if I'm if I'm correct. Okay. Yeah, I'd be I'd be happy to do that. Or whoever is um, who's ever supposed to do that, just give us your name and address. And... Yep. Okay. My name is uh, Jamie Gruber, and I am here representing Wayfinders uh, at 1780 Main Street in Springfield, Massachusetts. And um, thank you very much. Um, as far as we, we discuss the lighting plan, we will, um, our architect will um, have that updated and we'll send that along for next meeting. Um, as far as um, to follow up on a couple of the items from last meeting, the HVA 
see equipment, rooftop equipment. Our architect is working on um, providing some perspectives on that to give you a, um, a sort of a view shed analysis of what the, you know, what that might look like. Um, and we'll have that for, uh, for, for next meeting as well. And um, let's see. And as far as the, there was some questions regarding the residential bylaw. Um, we're working internally on that and we will provide a written response for that um, ahead of our meeting uh, for next week to, or ahead of our meeting in two weeks to discuss. And um, the, the oil tanks, yes, the oil tank, the underground oil tank that was discovered at um, 31 Southeast Street um, is, is going to be removed as part of the, um, as part of the development project. Okay. And yeah, and I'm, and I'm happy, um, to talk about the laundry facilities. I would like to talk about, um, the overall schedule just to, just to confirm, um, I know that there were a few kind of schedules going around and this evening we had on the agenda, the stormwater management for both sites, but, um, we would also be prepared to um, discuss uh, a couple of other items such as property management and income restrictions um, and, uh, you know, at the application selection process, if the board um, was willing to hear that this evening as well. You know, Jay, Mr. Gruber, um, we had set the schedule out with the topics we were prepared to discuss. Um, and I don't, I'm not going to change, I'm not going to add additional topics at this time, because uh, I think those are, are uh, deserve property management, income restrictions, those kinds of things, I think deserve study by board members before we take uh, testimony on and hear from you. So I think we'll just do what you have ready. Um, this, is a, this is on a, a quick time frame, and that's because we want to get it done as soon as possible to give you a chance to break ground as quickly as possible if indeed the board does approve this. Um, but uh, so we'll just take, we'll take what you got ready for tonight and we'll have those other items scheduled as we have uh, intended to schedule them coming up okay. next week in two weeks. Okay, that sounds, sounds yep. good. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'll share my screen here and um, can you all see my, my screen and? Yep. Okay, where my cursor is. Okay, so um, our architect went back and and looked at the uh, the their preliminary um, design and added some additional detail to it, and um, you know looked at the the stacking washers and dryers that we typically have in our um, in our developments and at uh, in the laundry room in Southeast Street. Um, they we were able to get um, five washers and dryers provided. Four of them will be stacked and there'll be an ADA um, accessible um, dryer configuration when they're side by side and uh, along with uh, folding tables. The architect also provided this sketch that um, says what, you know, the state, the, the, the code requirements are uh, one washing machine for every 10 dwelling units. And um, we do, we do exceed this and this is, um, the kind you know above the above the standard, um, and then at Belcher Town Road, we also looked at how many we had in there, and I think that there was um, the 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 number has you know increased where we have um forty seven units, so it'd be roughly five um washers and dryers required by code, and we're providing eight washers and dryers um. They're all, you know, within close proximity to the elevator um, to, you know, for residents to use the elevator to go up and down the stairs. And I just wanted to kind of present this information to the board um, to update what was originally shown at uh, last at the last hearing. So, Mr. Um, Gruber, are, is your architect, is he can, will they be looking at possible additional laundry rooms, especially in the Belchertown Road area that we looked, it was just discussed um, and contemplated that there might be a place underneath the, the a, a lower ceiling area underneath of um, the roof on the third floor of Belchertown. And uh, we were looking to see if there's any, he was going to look and see if there's any opportunities for 
a second laundry room on, in Southeast Street just to reduce the amount of travel and increase the convenience for people to do their laundry. Um, is, is that still something that's being looked at? They're 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 looking at that. I, I mean, however, we you know we'd prefer to kind of have a lot of the units all in the in the same in the same area and um, accessed by ele by elevator. I know the Southeast Street site is 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 fairly um, is is fairly tight and mm -hmm. um, and they felt that the Belcher Town Road um, location of the laundry room is is sort of in the lobby area and it's you know it has a has a nice you know large window as opposed to being kind of tucked in, tucked in a in a in a corner somewhere so um, but. I know that it is it is something that you know we could still look at, um, and um, but I, I I do know that um, HL the EOHLC the funding agencies sometimes have their own regulations regarding um, laundry room areas and and um, you know where those are located and and how many um, you can provide um, you know in 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 the building so. You think they have a limit on how many you can provide, or they have a they have restrictions on where what the room must look like? Um, I I think that they they would have it would it would be something that they would look at, and um, you know if there's multiple multiple laundry rooms in the building, that it might be a uh, something that the um, funders would um, you know would have to approve. Okay, so, so let's let's do this. I I know I. I know there was considerable interest in increase in decreasing the, the amount of distance that people on the third floor of Belcher Town would have to travel for the the laundry, um, and it would just it's and it, it's something that will reduce you know potential conflicts where people have a long way to go. The laundry gets kept in the washer, the dryer, and people don't really want to take other people's laundry out until they come down and do it. It's just have your continue to look at that if you would i think that you would find a significant support amongst board members for additional laundry facilities if you could find a place for them and if there's not some kind of prohibition on having more than one laundry room in a 47 unit development that, that so the, the belcher town road is the most uh it's the one that cries that for me it cries out for the most for this but i would like your your uh, architect to continue to look at that if you could Okay. Mr. Sloboder? Yes, um, I have two questions about things you just said. You said you prefer, you use the word prefer, um, to have the laundry facilities for the building all in one place. Can you tell me why that's a preference? Well, Sometimes laundry machines um, flood in, in, in buildings and, and, and that sort of thing. And, and they also, um, you know, there's dryers and, and a, a lot of that is for property management to be able to monitor the area in, in our, in our, you know, in our buildings. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, and the other question is when you referred to other agencies that have a, a look at things, and um, the chair asked for clarification, is is there a limit to how many you can have? I just want to be clear. You said that some of these places look at what you're doing. Is it possible to have too many? Is that a, is that a concern that you may be providing too many laundry opportunities and therefore they would ask you to reduce them? Is that actually ever done? We'll have we'll have the architect look at you know what what where they okay where they okay thank you great thank you Mr Gruber um, so in terms of the the items then that we're coming back I think you've got uh, we'll be seeing the the lighting study. The visibility, you're working on that. Laundry facilities, you're working on that. Rental bylaws, we'll hear more about that. Uh, we'll get a written response before the next meeting in two weeks. Is that reasonable? I mean, I don't want to rush it before it's it's um, going to be ready. Is that, Ms. Fryman, I know, I think you're probably working to 
prepare that. Is that going to be a reasonable time frame? I believe so, yeah. Okay, great. Um, and we've settled on the oil tanks. Um, then I guess what we need to do is talk about the stormwater management and the stormwater infrastructure to the extent that you're, that there's um, information that comes from the comps debate, the CONCOM meeting last night that uh, you want to relate to us where you stand with that. So um, we actually continued the hearing uh, last night. So we didn't, um, we did not present last night. We're continuing to the uh, ninth. Okay, to the ninth. Correct. And, and our next meeting is the, what is just the Miss Williams? When is our next meeting date? It's in two weeks, right? October 10th. October 10th. So it seems to me that having you on the agenda for stormwater one day after the CONCOM doesn't make a lot of sense because if they ask you to do something to modify it, you don't have time to do that and show it to us. And you may not be able to, and they, or they may have, they may continue to, they may continue the hearing as well, not reach a conclusion. So it seems to me that what we should do uh, for the next is, is wait on the stormwater until you're able to um, get a resolution from the CONCOM the Conservation Committee, and then we can schedule the stormwater subject matter. Um, when we can then we could proceed with the topics that we had originally scheduled for two weeks, as well as the follow up on the laundry facilities, etc. that we asked for in um, uh, for this that you weren't able to provide us at this point in time uh, from last meeting. Uh, does that make sense to either to board members or to, to you, Mr. Gruber? Um, I, I just like to discuss that we presented the um, we presented the stormwater uh, man, the stormwater plans um, to the conservation commission, and we also walked the sites with them, and they provided comments. And these plans are in response to um, mm -hmm. those comments. So. The, the reason why we are presenting tonight is to to present the stormwater plans as 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 they would be presented based on the comments from the Conservation Commission. So our engineer um, feels as though, you know, as as he mentioned, and I'll, I could let him speak for himself, the, the the plans aren't, you know, the plans are where they need to be at for the Conservation Commission based on their comments. That's why we're present. That's why we won't elected to present them this evening. So I misunderstood you. You want to present the CONCOM tonight, even though they aren't, it, they haven't voted, They're, they've continued to meet. You want to present your stormwater management plan tonight? Is that, did I misunderstand you? Is that what you wish to do? Yes. Yeah, we, we would, we would uh, like to present the stormwater management tonight. We've already, we had the initial hearing um, with the Conservation Commission, as Jamie uh, noted, and we've received their comments and updated our plans accordingly with that initial hearing. Um, and, you know, I can't speak for the Conservation Commission, but I think we are, you know, looking pretty favorable in the grand scheme of things. As And uh, we don't anticipate any, you know, future major comments that would, that would impact, a, you know, a presentation as um, oh. simple as this one, you know, for it's, I don't think we need to get into like two into the weeds of stormwater, but, you know, I can give you, give you all a pretty good overview of our design and uh, the details associated with it. So um, you're pretty much, you're, you feel confident that this is 95% done. Absolutely. All right. And just, um, Ms. Fryman, you have your hand up. Did you want to add in something? No, I'm just going to um, expand on that and that getting comments and uh, any uh, questions that you have uh, that the DBA has, then we can then take them back to the DBA when we go on the night and then finalize everything. So getting your feedback would be really helpful and help us finalize the plans for, with the CONCOM on the night. All right. And Ms. Brestrup or Mr. Malloy, uh, do you agree with the representation that this is pretty much, that the CONCOM is pretty much um, in, comfortable with, with what they have, what they're going to be presenting tonight? Do you have any reason to believe otherwise? Mr. Malloy? Yeah, no, the um, Aaron Jacques, the wetland administrator, thought that they could have approved it the first night. Um, they asked some questions about, you know, could they change some of the grading and the, the island in the parking lot on Belchertown Road, but 
it was almost, I don't want to say it was like a rhetorical question, but they just said, could you make some changes? But otherwise she said they were basically ready to approve it that first hearing. And so uh, the applicant actually almost requested the extension just to work on it a little bit to see if they could make it better. But the conservation commission had really no issues uh, after that first presentation. So the expectation is that they would approve it um, on the ninth or whenever they hear it next. So the continuation is just to, to see a final plan. That's yeah. The essence what it is, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. All right. Then let's go ahead and do it. I miss, I'm sorry for the confusion. I misunderstood what you wish to do, Mr. Gruber. Um, okay. So I'm going to start with the Belchertown Road site. Um, and I know I talk fast, so feel free to interrupt at any point. Uh, just slow me down or ask questions. Um, so the Belchertown Road site, we have uh, the building, as you're all aware, that stormwater is. Um, from pitch roofs for the most part. So it's all collected via downspouts that are located around the building face. Um, you can see these uh, listed as DS numbers. Uh, there's quite a few of them. That stormwater is then routed underground through uh, CPP piping uh, that makes its way around both sides of the building. Um, and it eventually ends up going through one of two flared end sections. So these are, you know, sections uh, of like a plastic, uh, diffuser pipe basically with an open end uh, that goes into a riprap area to slow down the water um, that goes into this bioretention area um, per the conservation commission comments um, we had some additional bioretention area back here that instead of having closer to the wetland you know in respect to the conservation commission we moved to the center parking aisle and created a bioretention area um, in the center of the parking area um, the water as it collects um, in heavier storms overflows over a riprap spillway in the back and then goes into the conservation uh, wetland area uh, at the rear of the site. The um, vehicular water as it travels through the site uh, at the top of the hill. So, you know, the site generally goes from Belchertown Road and slopes down towards the conservation area in the back. Uh, it's picked up by catch basins, which flow to water quality structures. Um, which are sort of hydrodynamic separators that uh, allow the water to form in a cyclonic movement, um, shooting out the TSS and, you know, attach phosphorus and nitrogen nutrients attached to that TSS. And that's collected in the bottom of these structures, which are then um, cleaned out periodically um, in accordance with the operation and maintenance plan associated with this project. Uh, once that water um, passes through the water quality structure, it continues flowing down and then into the same flared end section uh, that meets with half of the roof uh, that we discussed previously. Um, and then everything past about, you know, this point, you know, most of the parking area flows towards overland um, this bioretention area in the center of the parking aisles. So as that water all flows towards the center, this sort of stone area, um, it is filtered through by that bioretention planting. Um, it's a soil mix that then goes to a sand, uh, that then, then goes to a pea stone layer, and then a reservoir course below that. Uh, there's an under drain that picks up that water once it's been filtered through that uh, those stone and sand mixtures. Uh, and then that water makes its way through the 10 inch pipe uh, and then into the flare down section and into the, uh, the main bioretention basin at the rear of the site as well. Um, so just in a quick summary, the roof water, uh, you know, is already seen as clean water that doesn't need to go through any sort of hydrodynamic separators, but it does get filtered through and infiltrated out through the bioretention base in the rear of the site. The vehicular water um, is treated, you know, sort of twice. So once through the water quality structure or the uh, parking bioretention and then then makes its way downstream to the larger bioretention where it's infiltrated into the ground as well. Um, this does meet the MS4 requirements of uh, phosphorus uh, removal um, and also uh, meets the TSS removal requirements as well. Any questions or comments from board members regarding the uh, stormwater management plan for the Belchertown road site? Okay, do you have similar for the uh, Southeast street site? Absolutely. Um, Southeast street. Uh, so we have high groundwater on this site. So the system is slightly different. So if you're wondering why we didn't go with like sort of a basin, which is, you know, considered more almost like green infrastructure. Uh, we went through a couple different options and we decided that this option is going to be the best for this site. So this site's actually porous pavement, um, which wayfinders does have experience with. They have, you know, uh, porous pavement on other of their developments as well. Um, so instead of 
water making its way through to a flared end section. We have the roof water again collected through downspouts, pipe through, and then going through these porous pavement systems. Um, so all the roof water goes through subgrade through a pipe through the reservoir course and then makes its way to the culvert uh, that exists behind the um, or in the current like basketball area. The it's my understanding that uh, Amherst is uh, choosing to uh, reconstruct the culvert and under a different project, uh, but, you know, associated with this general work timeline, um, a sort of stream to uh, reconstruct a more natural condition around the parking area in the back. So this culvert will be daylight instead. A natural stream will be created around um, and then back into the wetland. Um, and then, you know, the under drain from our porous pavement will daylight into that stream um, after being cleaned up. So all of the roof water again goes through the roof drains and then any of the site water. So the water that falls on the landscaping, the water that falls on the sidewalks and vehicle area, that will filter through the top course of the porous pavement. I can actually show you a section of that um, right here. So we've got the uh, porous asphalt paving. So that's a, you know, almost granular sort of asphalt. Um, the water flows through there, goes through this choker course, which is a, you know, a, a tight three quarter inch crushed stone layer that helps filter out um, like larger particulates. Then it goes to the bank run gravel filter course, which is even finer, uh, filters out uh, most of the TSS and attached phosphorus. Uh, and then there's a filter blanket in between that and the reservoir course, just so there isn't any sort of uh, um, clogging of the of the reservoir course. The reservoir course slows down the water with a, a higher void capacity. Um, and then the water makes its way towards that CPP perforated under drain at the bottom of the section, um, which then goes out towards that uh, reconstructed natural stream uh, that I mentioned earlier. And as you can see, we have this 40 mil poly barrier around the sides. And the reason for that is, as I mentioned earlier, we have high groundwater on this site. We can't encourage infiltration um, as a result, but we can uh, you know, get the water quality treatment, uh, TSS and phosphorus that we're looking for uh, by filtering through this porous asphalt section instead by keeping it out uh, and separated from groundwater. So you've had experience with the porous um, asphalt. Is that so how quickly does that does does water filter through that porous asphalt? I'm just curious. I don't know much about this. Really fast. So I've done a few hundred of these facilities in uh, Washington yeah. D.C. and then also um, around New England. Um, we've had like you know fire hoses that like you'll you'll spill out on top of the water um, and it'll go right through it. It sucks it up almost immediately. Oh, so I I, I was wondering if if it would be a problem when it was you know, like freezing temperatures and you had water from snow melt and then it got very cold and you'd have a lot of ice, but it sounds like the water goes through quickly. The water goes through very quickly. Yeah. Correct. And then as part of the operation and maintenance plans, um, just to, you know, avoid any clogging, um, there's a vacuum truck that um, gets hired to vac up the top layer. Um, so over time, you know, it obviously will collect some sediments. That's the point of it being there is to clean up the water. Um, you know, periodically the vacuum truck will come out, uh, suck up everything in the top layer and it'll be restored to its original condition hmm. or near to it. Interesting. Vacuuming the asphalt. Cool. Yeah, it's really right. cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, I am unfamiliar with that product. Okay. Um, questions from members regarding um, the Southeast Street site. So you're not looking at a lot of, I guess my one question is you're not looking at additional runoffs to the neighbors to the right and the left uh, from the, the additional roof area from the, uh, uh, the new building, are you? So runoff for both sites has been decreased compared to the existing condition. Yeah, yeah, that's, I seem to recall you saying that's the site visit. Okay. I have no further questions regarding the stormwater plan. Um, anybody else? All right. Um, well, since we don't have other topics before us tonight, if the people do have questions they want the applicant to respond to or, or uh, be able to present for next week, uh, this would be a good time to raise them. Um, but let's go through the topics, what we have scheduled for not next week, but in two weeks. Ms. Williams, can you pull up the, the um, schedule which had the topics on it I think let me see if I can find it
meeting schedule. Uh, Mr. Chair, it's pulled up for everyone to see. I'm sharing my screen. Oh, good. Thank you. Yes. All right. So the next week we'll or on the excuse me, not next week again, on October 10th, we will deal with lighting, um, property management, income restrictions, and financials. And then we'll have, we hope to have the responses to the rental, uh, rental uh, bylaw, um, any development on laundry facilities and any progress on HVAC. Is there anything else that board members wish to have addressed in the meeting on the 10th? Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Mr. When, we, when we talk about income restrictions, is there an application that can be attached to be reviewed? I don't know. That's a good question. Mr. Gruber, are you able to yes. respond? Mr. Yeah, yes, there's a there is there is an application that um, we can we can provide that. Thank Great. you. Good. All right, um, Mr. Malloy, you have your hand up. Yeah, hi, thanks. I was, you know, um, the property management piece could take a bit of a discussion, but the income restriction financials are highly regulated. And really we're not, I mean, we, we don't have much say in that in terms of the zoning board, right? The, the funders, the state regulate that very heavily as well as the application selection process, which would be in um, hearing five. And then there's local preference. So I, I think we could actually, if property management is there and we're talking about income restrictions, I think we could get into application selection and local preference. And so I wouldn't want to limit the agenda to those three items and then not be able to proceed if there's time. And so, for instance, income restrictions, they have their pro forma, their AMIs, you know, they're hitting a number of different AMI levels. I'm not sure exactly how much information the zoning board needs for income restrictions. We, you know, we're not, we can't, at this point, are we going to say, well, we want to see more units at a certain AMI? Uh, same with financials. We can't make the project uneconomic. And so, you know, really it's like a broad overview of sources, uh, you know, in, you know, expenses and, you know, is it financially feasible, which has already been determined. So I, I just, I want to make sure we're not getting so detailed uh, in the review. Same with like the application form. I'm not sure what, you know, that's something that the state has to, and the funders have to approve. And so, I'm not sure what 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 review the zoning board would have getting to that level of detail in terms of actually looking at an app, a resident application form. You know, I I understand our the limits we have, Mr. Malay, and I appreciate them, and and we may not be able to change things, but the board has to approve this, and and I think the understanding what the income restrictions are, what the financials are of the of the the the, the applicant, as well as the other things that they'll be coming back with. I mean, those are all, I, they're appropriate for us to try to understand. And we, even if we can't change them, I don't think it's a waste of time for us, for the board to understand what the property management is, what the income restrictions are, or the financials, as well, well, as, I don't think... as, well as the application selection process. And, and um, I think we could have, I'm comfortable with laying out the topics as, as we've laid them out. And I don't want to delay this any, but I, I don't want to have, I want to have members know exactly what they're going to deal with in each meeting and be able to prepare and ask their questions and be ready to, to uh, move forward and not have uh, uncertainty as to what's coming up on the, on the agenda. So I would, my preference would be to deal with what they could, for them to come back with as much as they possibly can on the questions we already have, and then to have property management, income restrictions and financials. Uh, for the next meeting, we're we're moving along. Uh, I think we're moving along at a good clip. We have until January to do this, and I think we're ahead of schedule already. Um, and so I, I don't want to delay this at all. I'm I think we should move it, but I'm I'm not I'm comfortable with the with the agenda that we have, and and I'm also comfortable with members knowing exactly what the what is the uh, the nature of the project. Sure, sure. You know, I, I think that it's all worthwhile. I don't want to say skip over it, but like tonight we're it's been a really short meeting and I feel yeah. like we could have. Um, I just want to ask on the 10th, is that a half meeting for the ZBA? Because, you know, sometimes we have half meetings. 
So is this a half meeting on the 10th or is it a full meeting for the Wayfinders project? The 10th is a half meeting for the Wayfinders. Um, but okay. then we have Redgate Lane. So that might not take that long. Um, I mean, you know, I was just I, thinking, I mean, for instance, what if we had um, application selection processes tied to incomes? So if we lump that on the 10th, even if we don't get to it, it would, you know, if, if we listed it, it would just not preclude the board from talking about it you know, if it, if it's discussed, that's that's all um, I'm suggesting. I understand. I think in my pro in my experience, the application application selection process and local preference take a lot of time to discuss. Members really want to understand it, and they may not be able to affect it, but they want to understand it. And it's complicated, and local preference is complicated. So I think a meeting for those two topics makes sense. And I'm going to, as chair, I'm going to take the, my prerogative and have the hearings scheduled for October 5th or October 17th and have those two topics on the, on the agenda. We may have additional topics that um, come up and questions we have. And it may be that some of the questions we've already asked may not be ready for our consideration for to present to us until that time. So I'm comfortable with this, uh, this layout, and I'm comfortable with uh, this, the schedule we have at current time. Mr. Gruber. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to clarify that the um, the application will just be a sample of the application. Those are those are tailored for each, you know, individual individual project. So we'll be able to provide a sample of something um, similar to that. And um, we'll also be giving a just a we can give a, a brief report as to how the Conservation uh, Commission meeting um, went the uh, preceding night. Great. Um, I and I did have one question um, regarding since we have the agenda up, are we able to kind of check off the items that you know we have this kind of this outstanding list where the lighting, the rental bylaw, the laundry facilities, and the HVAC, um, you know, rooftop equipment? But are we once we discuss the items, can we move on from those and know that you know our design team is is um, has has met the um, expectation of the of the zoning board? In, it, unless there are additional questions that have been asked, I mean, the questions on architecture, I think, are the ones that are outstanding. I don't think there's anything else that's out there um, on mechanical systems. I think it's the same. I think we have our outstanding questions, and I don't anticipate going back to those, but. Something could something could develop and it could happen, but I think you, we did a pretty good job and a pretty. Uh, I think the board did a and you presented a pretty um, fulsome description of both the architecture and mechanical systems, and we had just a couple of questions that came from that. So I think we're pretty much done with that stormwater. I don't think we have much more unless the concom would say something different. And for the other things, I think we will move through them and be done with them, but. You never know if there's a question that comes from from something, from a topic or not. And so I'm not going to preclude the ability of the board to raise a question, but so far I haven't seen that those items that are checked off, we're going to have to revisit. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I have no further I have no further comments on tonight's meeting. Um, other members of the board, any comments, questions, concerns regarding this application? If not, I would um, entertain a motion that we continue this public hearing until October tenth at six o'clock. So moved. Is there a second? Second been moved and seconded to um, continue this hearing until October 10th. Um, any discussion? If not, the, the vote occurs. The chair votes aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Henson? <laughs> aye. Mr. Sloboder? Aye. All right, we will return on the 10th and I Thank you. We understand what's on the agenda. Work with the staff if you have any questions, or and they can get to us to make sure that we have the uh, the agenda for the tenth set. Um, 
Next order of business is public comment on, oh, I'm sorry. We continued the hearing before we asked if there was any public comment and I, that is my mistake. Um, so I, what I'd like to do is open up uh, public comment on this matter if there is any public comment on the matter before us. I think we can do, Carolyn, will you help me out with this? I closed it, I continued it before I allowed for public comment and I, I rushed it. Can we have public comment in a separate? You, you certainly can, Mr. Chairman. Okay. You have to right. take a vote or, or close the meeting so you can go back to public comment. All right, is there, this, this is probably moved, but is there any, is there any public comment, any members of the public who wish to speak on the matter before us tonight, which is the Wayfinders Comprehensive Permit? I have no one wishing to speak on my end. All right. So we'll move on to the next order of business, which is public comment on any matter that's not before us tonight. Still no public comment. Still no public comment. Great. Okay, um, the next order of business is new business, which in any matter not um, anticipated within the last 48 hours. And that normally includes the, um, the schedule. So Ms. Williams put up the schedule again so we understand, I mean the, the whole ZBA schedule, not just the Wayfinder schedule. So we have on the 10th, we have half wayf Wayfinders and half um, the, it's bouncing around on me, uh, half the Red Gate Lane. Uh, Mr. Slobiter, you're not gonna be there for that one. And for on the 17th, we have Wayfinders only. And on the 24th, we don't have Wayfinders, we have 328 College Street. Um, and then we go back to Wayfinders for waivers, conditions, and findings on the 14th. Okay, any questions about the schedule? Yes, Mr. Gruber. Thank you. Uh, just on the schedule, I see that Wayfinders is listed above the other. It, will that does that indicate that we'll be on it at six six p.m. or will will we be on um, afterwards? I would have you on first. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other questions regarding the uh, from the board members? Any comments? If not, um, I would entertain a motion that we adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Been moved and seconded. Uh, motion to adjourn is not debatable. The chair votes aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Slobiter? Aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. And Mr. White? Aye. Thank you. Meetings adjourned. We'll all see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you all. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Good night. Have a great night, everybody.